everyone. What's up? How are you guys? Good. Good. At least you're dry. You're not outside. That's good. So we are back, and we are here to talk to you all about a few different things today. Um, so primarily, we're going to focus on job search strategies, but along with that, obviously, you need a resume in order to get those positions and start your careers. So we will be incorporating some things about resume and cover letters as well. Um, and then for those of you that either already volunteered or maybe you didn't volunteer, but you brought your resume along, we'll gladly take a look at that um, and give you any critiques, <coughs> feedback, things like that that we can help you all with. Um, and then we'll also show you your interview interview stream assignment. So I know y'all have that coming up, so we'll actually log on to the website, show you where you can find that information, how you'll be able to access it, and then submit it. That way you all can get the grade that you need for your course. Um, so basically, these are just some of the topics we're going to cover today. So we'll start by kind of going over the job search process as a whole, how long it takes, what it entails, the different steps you're going to go through, how to get started with that process. So things like a resume, a cover letter, networking, all of those key components that go into your whole job search. Um, and we will end things by talking about some resources available to you all, both on our campus, but also some that may be outside of our campus, and also how to navigate salary offers. So a lot of our students don't even think that negotiating is even an option for them um, when they're accepting their first full-time position after college, but that's not always the case. And sometimes negotiating for a higher salary or for maybe more or different benefits is going to be appropriate. So we'll talk about some of those things as well. All right, so to get started, this is that job search process. And obviously, to get a job, you have to apply. So the very first thing on here is to submit that application along with just clicking apply online or maybe you're even you know submitting a resume or something at a job fair there are some things that go in to getting started and actually submitting that application outside of that click um, so things like getting your documents together so making sure your resume is updated your cover letter is ready to go we always encourage our students you know maybe making sure your social media is updated as well whether that's a LinkedIn whether that's another type of social media that you're using professionally maybe Maybe you have a blog, maybe you have an Instagram that showcases your digital media. Anything that you may have, make sure that it is ready to go, that it is updated. Additionally, when you're submitting that application, we want you all to be aware of a software called the Applicant Tracking System. So are any of you familiar with Applicant Tracking Systems at all? Okay, so essentially what that is, is every company out there, with the exception of a very, very, very small few, use an applicant tracking system to scan resumes. So when you go to LinkedIn or when you go to indeed.com, you're going to be submitting your resume for these jobs and before your resume gets in the hands or on the computer of a human being, it's going to go through a software scan first. So those applicant tracking systems are designed to help the people that are hiring source through the hundreds of resumes in a very quick manner. That way they'll get the best of the applicant pool to then actually take the time to look at face-to-face -face or over that computer. So those applicant tracking systems can be difficult and can be tricky to navigate. Um, some things you want to be aware of with that in regards to your resume is that templates are usually not a good idea when you're submitting your document online. So all of those really pretty colorful templates that you'll see on Word or even sites like Canva where you can make a nice pretty version of your resume, those are great if you're handing out a physical copy. If you're going to a job fair or you're networking and you're handing out a resume, great, use all the templates you want. When you actually go to submit those documents online though, templates and applicant tracking systems do not get along very well. Um, so a lot of times it will misplace your information, it'll actually delete some content sometimes. So to avoid all of that, we recommend in our office using a blank Word document to create your resume and your cover letter. Also with that applicant tracking system, be aware that it's looking for keywords. So you're going to want to make sure that you took the time to read the job description that you're applying for and seeing what are the responsibilities of this position? What am I going to need to have as an employee to succeed in this role? Maybe it's going to be things like teamwork, communication, attention to detail, whatever that company is highlighting in their job description, you wanna make sure that you're touching and addressing some of those same points in your document. So if the applicant tracking system is scanning your resume and they see that the first experience you have is an internship and within that internship you've highlighted that you worked with a team of six other interns, they're gonna establish that as teamwork. And if that's something that the job description says is required, 
bonus points for you. You're gonna get a green check by that tracking system and you're more likely to be able to move on then. So making sure that you're updating your resume and cover letter for each job that you apply for is very important. You don't need a completely new document for every single job, but it's a good idea to go in, make the content more relevant, make sure that it is specific to the job that you are applying for. So once you get past that application, hopefully you'll get to the interview round. There's normally two interviews in a job process. The first is a scanning interview, most likely. They just wanna see um, who you are, get a general sense of how you'll potentially fit in to the company, and also what you can potentially bring to the role. Um, so that's usually a phone interview. They're usually not going to want to bring you to their location until they've done a pre-check. They wanna make sure that you're worth bringing to their site. So during that phone interview, be prepared for a lot of behavioral-based questions. So things like, what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Um, what is unique about you? Everyone's favorite, tell me about yourself. So some of those basic behavioral questions that you can guarantee to get are going to happen in that first phone interview. And then after that phone interview, hopefully you'll be brought on for either maybe a Skype interview or hopefully an in-person interview. And during that in-person interview, they'll ask you some of those behavioral questions again. So you'll may get some of the same strengths, weaknesses, tell me about a time you did this, tell me about a time you worked in this setting, but you're also going to start get, getting more technical questions as well as job specific questions. So if the job you're applying for is to be um, a physical trainer, you're going to get questions about that role. You're probably going to get asked very specific questions. If we had a client who was presenting these concerns, what would your plan of action be? How would you deal with this situation? So you're going to get more into the job function during that second in-person interview. Once those things happen, hopefully you'll get an offer. That's everyone's hope. <coughs> but we always like to encourage our students that while yes, offers are awesome and they're great, make sure you're doing your homework and your due diligence in checking those offers before you sign on the dotted line. Um, we definitely never want a student to sign on something just because they're so excited. They finally got that job offer. Make sure that this company is a good fit for you, that this job is a good fit for you, that it's going to meet your basic needs. And that includes things like salary. It includes things like location. Where's this job even at? So some of those more basic things you'll wanna consider as well. When you're in that phase, a lot of times salary negotiation may come up. And we'll touch on this a little bit later, um, but just keeping in mind that it is a possibility depending on your specific circumstance and the position that you're applying for. And then once all of the talking is done, you'll hopefully come to an agreement, have that final offer presented, and then once again, you can sign on that dotted line. Um, and we do encourage you all, make sure that when you do sign on that dotted line that you recognize that is a commitment to that company. Um, so sometimes students will sign, and then the next week they'll get a different offer, and they wanna take that offer instead. Um, and while we can't tell you what to do one way or another, it's definitely going to be in your best interest to think about what you already committed to and what you could potentially be losing out on if you were to try and back out of that contract. Um, not only your reputation, but also potential relationships that could be severed immediately if you decide to try and back out on that contract. So not to scare you all, it can be um, a very challenging time, but it's also mainly an exciting time. So there's a lot of good things that go on with this process as well. All right, so the average job search takes about six to eight months. Um, and a lot of times when students see this number, they kind of look at me and they're like, I graduate in three months, so that's not good. I haven't done anything yet. Um, so I don't want this number to scare you. I don't want you to think that, oh no, I graduate in December and I haven't started yet. That's okay. Um, this number is a very generous number. Um, we incorporate a lot of different factors into the six to eight month time range. So when it comes to actually applying, right, how soon do I need to start applying for jobs? Usually we recommend that happen about three months prior to graduation or three months before you want to start working. So for those of you that are graduating in December, October is your time. Um, end of September, we always have our job fair and that kind of kicks off recruitment season. So after that, being able to submit applications all throughout October, possibly November as well, and then hopefully you'll have everything solidified by that graduation date. So where the six to eight months comes in, is that prior to that three month time period, we want you all to be thinking about your job search process. What kinds of companies do you want to potentially work for? Do you like big or small organizations? 
What about relocating? Is that something you're willing to do? For a lot of students, it's not. They want to stay in the DFW Metroplex. That's fine, but be aware that may limit some of your options as well. Depending on the field you're in, you could have tons of options here too. Um, so thinking about some of those other factors that are going to impact your job search. Additionally, thinking about your VIPs. So what do you value? What are your interests? What's your personality type? And what is your skill set? So those four factors will definitely play into that job search. And we hope that you do this within that six to eight month range. So that way when you get to that point where you're ready to apply, you're not gonna waste your time applying for jobs that you know don't match what you're interested in or that you know don't really fit your values. For me, a big value is spending time with my family. So I want a job where I can leave at five most days of the week. I don't wanna be here on weekends and late at night right now in my life. So when I was looking, I applied for jobs everywhere because I was desperate. I wanted a job after college. And I made that mistake and I wasted a lot of time and energy applying for jobs that I knew wouldn't be a good fit for me anyway. Um, so we encourage you all to think of some of those external and internal factors before you actually do start clicking that apply button. All right, so I'm going to let Greg take over for a few moments and talk to you all about, yes, he's ready, <laughs> and talk oh, no, to you all great. about some you're of tracking. these next things. You're doing awesome. So um, a lot of the things that Jenna has said has definitely hit on and is very much a point, but I also want you all to realize that even before you hit submit application, your job search starts prior to that. It's that six to eight months that Jenna was talking about before. So knowing yourself and having that intrinsic, intentional conversation is going to be ideal. But there are going to be some things that we want to definitely touch on for you to get started. So, I mean, you already have gone through the resume and cover letter workshop, hopefully. If not, definitely feel free to go ahead and partake in that with us in the Career Development Center. You can come as many times as you want. You can also email your resume and cover letter to us, and we will get it back to you within five business days. So you want to make sure that that piece of marketing is going to be ideal before you hand it off to recruiters. Um, definitely, once again, utilize the job database. That's going to be where all of the off-campus opportunities that are full-time or part-time are going to be listed as well. But you can also utilize a couple of the other ones that we'll talk about as well. <clears throat> all important job search agent emails. So you, as I said before, can't be everywhere all the time. So you want to make sure that these systems are going to be designed to do the work for you as well. So you will be able to get notifications of jobs that match those VIPs that Jenna was talking about before specifically those career interests that are in Handshake. So not only does Handshake give you 25 jobs on a pretty much weekly basis that are emailed directly to you, every time you log into the database, you'll also get a comprehensive listing of those opportunities that align with what your career interests are in the database. And once again, definitely notify others that you are looking. Dr. Garner has a lot of professionals in the industry that I'm sure she networks with. She has a brain trust back there, so it's all in there. So why not tap into her? We were having a conversation with our student workers prior to us coming over here, and one of them, he's a marketing major, he said, you know what, your professors really want you to have a conversation with them. Ultimately, they're here to make sure that you succeed. And if they can go ahead and put in a good word for you, if you have a very productive, symbiotic relationship with your professor, who better to recommend you than that faculty member that sees you on a regular basis, right? So definitely notify those individuals. Indirect connections and indirect networking can be also vital as well. And so even if you don't know somebody directly that has an opportunity, that person that may be a liaison between you and that indirect connection may know of an opportunity or have an opportunity for you as well. Um, I think I talked about this the last time I was here. I'm sure Jenna talked about it as well. Nobody likes reading resumes, so all the more reason why you want to have that networking connection. I mean, Ayana, Jenna, and I are here to review your resumes. We're not doing it because we love it. So nope. just, I'm just, I'm being very transparent. You know, we want to help you all. However, that's not really our favorite aspect of our job. So if you're able to notify others of that, then that can, in many cases, bypass the resume. You know, I think I told the story the last time I was here about how Jenna got hired. You know, one individual in our office recommended her. I really didn't even need to look at Jenna's resume because the reputation of the person that recommended her was solid gold for me. So I was like, you know what? She's not going to recommend somebody that's crazy. So let me go ahead and give her a phone little call. Did he you know, know, little did I know. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. Um, and then also, of course, attend those networking opportunities and events. So I never like to say the phrase job fair because people are under the impression that I'm going to walk in here and get a job today. That's not always going to be the case. However, it can be a networking fair. 
You're there to have as many conversations with individuals that you possibly can have so you can make as many connections that you can make after that that will then possibly lead to an opportunity. Also, it once again helps put a face to your resume. So recruiters really love it when you've applied ahead of time and you come in and you say, you know what, I already applied for your opportunity at UT Arlington. I just want to make sure that I put a face with the name on the resume that you may come across. And I wanted to give you an in-person rationale and reason why I feel like I'm going to be a good addition to your team and why I'm a great fit for the position. I mean, also, recruiters love knowing that you know about them. They love hearing about themselves. And so if you're able to go ahead and give that insight as well, they're going to eat that up. You know, oh, you've already drank the Kool-Aid. You're in the culture. <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and get you a polo right now. The lanyard, everything. Look, key fob, all of that. Um, so, yes, any questions about this slide whatsoever at all or anything else we've discussed thus far? We're good? Awesome. You got my light, cameraman? You good? All right. All right, you know I'm standing in my light. <laughs> my good side. Pin my mark. All right. Wonderful. So... A lot of jobs are filled through networking. As Greg was just mentioning, networking is a great way to kind of get that face attached to the resume and even more. Um, so what percentage of jobs do y'all think are filled through networking? 87%. 80 what? So. 87, that's close. That's very close. What did you say? 90, a little lower. 83. A little higher than 83. This is what I wish we had giveaways. because y'all. 85, I heard yes. it, yes. 85% of jobs are filled through networking. Um, and that's a big number, right? So again, networking doesn't have to be difficult. It doesn't have to be hard. I think a lot of times when we hear the word networking, a lot of our minds go to fancy suits, fancy outfits, really stuffy corporate events. Um, that's at least what my mind went to um, when I was in your position just a little bit ago, a few years back. Um, and I was scared to network. I was not comfortable with it. I didn't think I'd be good at it. I didn't know how to even start that conversation. But the really great thing about it is that it truly does not have to be a difficult thing to do. So right now, what we're doing with you, being here, you all contributing to the conversation, looking at your resumes after this, that's networking, right? It's not hard. It's not difficult. If you pass me later on in the hallway, I'm going to recognize you. It's a small enough group. I'm going to recognize you. If you wave, I'll be, ah, hey, yeah, you were Just remind me who great. you are. I remember. Yeah, you know, but it doesn't have to be challenging, and that's the whole point we really want to get across to you all. So like Greg mentioned, attending those great events like a job fair, or as he likes to call it, a networking fair, those are awesome ways to network. Um, even just today in our office, we had Fortune 500 companies here to meet with our students, right? So our office does our very best to bring employers to you all to network in a very easy, non-threatening environment. So we have employers here almost every day on campus ready to meet you all um, in respective manners. And don't let the employer name scare you off. A lot of times a student will say, well, this employer doesn't have opportunities for me as public health or as exercise science or as communications. But you don't know what that company could potentially have to offer. Um, I know when I think of the company Apple, I think tech, right? I, I'm not tech. I don't have any background in information systems or anything like that. They have so many other jobs outside of tech that they can show you and they can tell you about and they can educate you on. You never know what kind of position that company could potentially have. And even if it ends up that they don't have anything possibly related that you would want to do, you've still expanded your network and you've still made that connection. They may know someone else. And if you've made a good enough impression on them, they're going to be more than likely to refer you on to that person that they do know. So definitely attending those events outside of our center, any event on campus is great to attend, whether it's a club, organization, a Mavericks uh, speaker series, anything like that is an opportunity to network. The key to that, I will say, is doing your best to go outside your comfort zone, though. Um, so it's one thing to attend an event with your roommate or attend an event with the same group of people that you always hang out with, but actually going out and maybe introducing yourself to someone new and having that small side conversation with someone different. And that's the challenging part, and we understand that. Um, but you can take a friend with you. You don't have to go by yourself if you're more introverted and that's more comfortable. Definitely see that as a viable option. If you're like Greg and I and you're more extroverted, go by yourself. You'll do just fine and you'll meet so many new people by the end of the night, you won't know what to do with it. Um, so definitely using the UTA um, community, all the events that they have going on here, as well as DFW. There's a ton of great opportunities to network within DFW as a whole. Um, we're very fortunate with where we are located, um, so take advantage of those as well. 
LinkedIn is a great <coughs> online resource. I know Greg talked with y'all about that last week or the week before when he was here, um, some social media platforms and how to network and brand yourself, but definitely messaging people that you connect with on LinkedIn. So it's not enough to just connect with them. It's not enough to just send that invitation. You need to have some substance behind that. So sending them a message, following up, doing informational interviews, right? Just picking their brain, getting that free knowledge. What do you like about your job? What advice do you have for someone who's about to enter this career? What should I know? What should I not know? Or what do you not like about your job, right? It's good to get that information and it'll also help to establish that network. I always love to use the story. It's a personal story, um, but my husband got his job, his dream job out of college by one LinkedIn message. That was it. He didn't apply. He didn't submit his resume to the company. Um, he just sent one LinkedIn message. And during that message, he asked the individual, hey, I'm about to graduate soon and I would just really like some insight into what it's like to work for your company. What's it like to be in this field period? What are some you know, advice you can give me? What do you like about your job? What's something that I should know going into this? Any information you can have, any time you can give would be much appreciated. That's all that message said. It didn't say I need a job. It didn't say I would love to work for your company. Uh, it didn't say when can I apply, where can I apply. It was just strictly about creating that relationship. That individual replied back and they were able to send four, five, six messages back and forth. By the sixth message, he asked for his resume. He said, are you looking? And he was like, yeah, I'm looking. I'm desperately looking. I graduate <laughs> in two weeks and I have nothing lined up. Um, and he was able to send his resume. He never had to apply. He got to the interview round because that individual put his resume in the pile, gave his reputation um, on the line, like Greg had mentioned earlier with myself. Um, and he was able to solidify that job because once he got into that interview, he was able to show them his skills. He was able to talk about what was on that resume and even more than what was on that resume. Um, and I think that's a lot of what networking is. It's very difficult to submit your resume to an organization, especially a big organization, and expect to hear back. It doesn't happen very often. If there's thousands, hundreds of people applying for the same job that you want to, you need that person on the in to get you into the conversation, to get you a seat at the table. Um, and my husband found that. So I will say, I normally don't share this information because then <laughs> students come up to me afterwards and like get me into that company. Your husband works there, so you must know everything about it. Um, but my husband was an engineer, is an engineer, and the company was Lockheed Martin. And for those of you that know engineers, you know they love Lockheed Martin. Um, and so he was able to bypass the thousands of other people that applied for his position without even applying, right? And I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. He sent about 96 other LinkedIn messages that he didn't hear back from, right? So it's not like, wow, he's so lucky. He had this fairy tale story. He put in the work, <laughs> he did all the other things. I was there to hear him complain every time he didn't get those responses, but all it takes is that one. And he got that one to respond. And his life has been forever changed. He still works at Lockheed Martin to this day. He's gotten to move up within the company and he's loving his job. So definitely don't be afraid to network. Don't be afraid to send those messages because you never know what could potentially happen, even if it's the 97th message that you do send. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Right, so definitely knowing your resources. So we're gonna revisit interview stream in a couple of minutes. However, if you do ever have one of those screening interviews, we talked about having a phone interview. However, sometimes those screening interviews will be a Skype interview. And so you want to make sure that you're properly preparing for that because proper preparation prevents poor performance. And so interview stream will allow you to record yourself while you're conducting an interview to play it back. Because a lot of times it's written all over our faces and our nonverbal cues can be the death of us. So we want to make sure that we're doing what we can to kind of prepare for that. Um, also, you may have heard those horror stories before. However, when you are doing a virtual interview, make sure that you're all the way dressed. Don't be business up top, party down bottom. Don't wear yoga pants or underwear and nothing else or joggers or sweatpants or anything like that. And make sure that your background is going to be decent. There's one time I was looking at somebody's interview stream and she had a huge metallic star because you know that's big in Texas. That's probably not ideal for what it is that you want to do for a recorded interview. Or you'll hear babies crying, or dogs barking, or laundry being done, or desperate housewives, I don't know. Just make sure you're in a very serene environment as well. 
Um, we also do face-to-face -face practice interviews, so some people prefer those as well because they want to get that face-to-face -face and real-time interaction. So those are 45-minute appointments with a career consultant. So while we may not ask you public health-related questions because, one, we don't have public health degrees, and so you can say something that's totally off base, and we'll be like, oh, that was that's real great. good. That's, that's great. Oh, my God, say that again. <laughs> no, I'm not going to set you up for failure. Ask Dr. Garner for that. If you want something that's public health specific, she'll be able to give it to you. But we will ask you those behavioral interpersonal questions that are oftentimes going to trip people up. It's not the subject matter questions that oftentimes people have a problem with because you matriculated and you received that degree. So if you don't know it, we need to talk about something else. It is those behavioral, give me a scenario, tell me about a time, give me a situation, where do you see yourself in five years? You'll be surprised at how many people have not projected far enough five years into the future to where they don't know where they're going to see themselves. And so those are going to be the questions that we want to make sure that you're able to answer because you get hired for those technical skills, you get fired for those lack of marketable skills. And when they're asking you these questions, they're asking you these questions because they want to make sure you're a good cultural or organizational fit to their team. I know you've got the degree, I know you've got the major, I can teach you the technical skills I need you to know, I can take you for a six week certification course, I can't teach you how to function like a human being and I'm not going to take the time to do that. You got a degree, you went to college, you should already know. So we're going to take you through that so you'll be able to best answer those questions. Um, once again, we talked about Handshake. You definitely want to go ahead and look at that. Um, we update that on a regular basis. So what you may not see today, you may see next week. Also, go to our website. There's a lot of great online job search and um, interview resources that you can take a look at. You can look at a comprehensive listing of questions you may get during an interview, a comprehensive listing of questions you can ask, questions you should not ask under any circumstances. Do not ask about how much I'm getting paid and when I can take vacation. They have not offered you the job yet. Um, there are a list of illegal questions that you should not be asked as an interviewee. I mean, then also, we mentioned it before, Indeed, Ideal is ZipRecruiter and LinkedIn, great online search tools. What I always like to say, however, and I said that I think in the social media presentation, do not spend the majority of your time on these thinking that you're going to get something. If the preference, talk to people, have those conversations and then spend the rest of your time following up with them on here. Now granted, Caleb had a great, uh, 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 what am I trying story. to say? Success story, yes. yes, yes. Caleb had an excellent success story, but that's not gonna be everybody's success story all the time. I did the same thing, I didn't hear back from anyone. Yeah. So yeah, it doesn't work for everyone. So you wanna make sure that yes, 90% of the time you're talking to people, 10% of the time you're following up here because that's going to be vital. Um, but we can also have that conversation with you as well to identify, okay, well, what's going to be the best option for you and where? And one thing I will say as well is never turn your back on a perceived closed opportunity. Um, so like Greg mentioned with my hiring story of getting um, hired here, I applied for another role in the department and I did not get that role. Um, but instead of shutting down and getting grumpy about it and complaining and not reaching back out to those individuals, I still sent a follow-up email. You know, I still continued that conversation. And I think a lot of that was leading up to them recommending me then to Greg and his team. Um, if I would have shut down and been like, you know what, forget you all, you didn't want me, I don't want you, I wouldn't be here right now. But I kept that open mind, I kept the communication going because I was building my network. Um, and then they were able to recommend me on to mm -hmm. Greg. So definitely never, you know, take a perceived no um, mm -hmm. and just shut down with it because you don't know what could be coming around the corner. And even then, the person that recommended her applied for our office and she did not get the job the first time around. Mm -hmm. She applied again for another opening and then she got it. Yep. So there's something to be said about that tenacity. Yeah. So we're gonna you know, kind of breeze through this because for most of you, you're not here yet and that's okay. Um, the main thing we want you to know with navigating those salary offers is do your homework, do your research. Um, so there's definitely some factors that go into your salary such as location. Where's the cost of living? Uh, what's the cost of living where you're going to be working at? $60,000 in Dallas is very different than $60,000 in Los Angeles or New York City, right? You'll so, be homeless. Yes, <laughs> taking those things into account. What, what are those needs of yours? And it's okay to have salary as a priority. That's not a bad thing. I think a lot of times students who want that high salary get shamed and they're like, well, don't you wanna help people? Oh, you just want the money, that's all you want. That's not the case, so don't, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ain't nothing I going on but the rent. Yeah. 
So don't be afraid to prioritize your salary for yourself. Don't be afraid to advocate for yourself for that. There's nothing wrong with you um, if salary is something that you need and that is something that is a requirement for you. Um, so definitely figure out what your goals are and what your leverage is. So for some of you just starting out, you may not have a ton of leverage yet, but you'll develop that as you go throughout your career. Um, I know when Greg got this position a few years back, he was able to analyze some of his leverage, such mm -hmm. as getting his doctorate degree, the experience that he had in past career centers, and he was able to negotiate his salary. Um, so definitely being able to think of the things that you can bring to the table that no one else can. Maybe it's certifications, maybe it's education, maybe it is past experiences. Um, there's going to be something for all of you, and like I said, it may take time to develop those things, but you will develop your portfolio and you will develop leverage that you can then use in future negotiations. Um, and think through what you want to ask for. This is a really big one. So a lot of times having that salary negotiation or negotiation period conversation can be awkward and it can be difficult, especially if you've never done it before. So make sure you take the time to think of, okay, what do I need and what is that going to translate into for this role? Um, for some of you, it may not be more money. Maybe it's I need two extra vacation days a year because my family is out of town and I really want to be able to go and visit them. Or maybe it's a boss that allows you to flex your time. So if you're here late one night, don't worry about it. Come in late tomorrow. Don't even think twice about it, right? That's a benefit that I get working in this office. So there's going to be different benefits that you all receive based on the company that you choose to work with. Um, but definitely remember that there's other things outside of salary that you can negotiate for. Maybe it's continuing your education. Maybe you want them to help contribute or pay for the cost of a graduate or advanced degree. Uh, maybe it's going to conferences. You really are into professional development and you want to go to a conference every year. There's different things that can be negotiated outside of that salary. Mm -hmm. yep. All right, so I'm going to pull up interview stream um, on the website. That way you all can kind of see what that will look like for you. But in the meantime, do y'all have any questions that Greg or I can answer? Yeah, can you go back to the previous slide? The salary negotiation? Yeah. Take a picture too, because for those of you that are here, let's have this conversation sometime, schedule an appointment. Yes, sir. So like usually when, when the interviewer asks you for a desired salary, what, what should we say? like? If, if, you, if, if you just throw out like, you know, what's your salary range? Mm -hmm. So, so as Jenna mentioned before, hopefully you've been able to do your homework. You can come into our office. We have a NACE salary survey, and NACE is for the National Association of Colleges and Employers. And every semester, so basically every spring, summer, fall, they come out with an, a, a survey, a salary survey. So they give you an idea of the salary range that you can ask for in your industry or professional level. So it's usually 25th percentile, median, 75th percentile, and I believe there's another level as well. So I would not suggest giving, if possible, a specific number because you could lowball yourself and you could undervalue yourself. And as I've said before, the organization's job is to save as much money as they can. So if I know I could get you for cheap, I was going to offer you more, I'm going to get you for cheap. It's not my job to tell you, oh, no, you're worth so much more. No. Sign. Sign right here. <laughs> and we're good. Um, but So you want to make sure that when you look at that, look at that salary range. Um, and that's going to be important. So that's what that means there. And also sites like Glassdoor, if you've heard of Glassdoor or Salary.com, those are great resources as well. You can look up specific companies and specific positions within those companies and find out what people are currently making in those roles. So you can use that as a basis too. All right. So for interview stream, um, there's a few different ways that you can access this. I'm going to take you all through our website. Um, so our website is uta.edu slash careers. And then from there, you go to students and then interview prep. And right over here on the right, you'll see interview stream. So by clicking this link, um, it will take you to interview, stream, interview streams website. Um, you will be able to log in or create an account if you don't have one. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and log in. So once you log in, this is what it will look like for you. If you've done interview stream for another class, there will be you know, some remnants of that on here. But for most of you, this will probably be exactly what it looks like. And then all you need to do is go down here to the assignment code and type in the code that Dr. Garner will provide for you all. Um, so I do have the code here. It's very complicated, so I wouldn't <laughs> recommend trying to memorize it. Um, it's but like a Wi-Fi password. Yes. 
Once you type in your code, it will pull up the interview link directly because none of you have registered for it yet. The reason this is happening is because I already registered for it. So once you do that, it will pull you up to that interview directly and it'll come up with a nice little picture where you'll see yourself um, and it will prompt you to answer the questions. The questions will all be on the right and it'll take you through. So it'll count down, three, two, one, first question, you can then answer it. You'll click next, you're able to review your response. If you wanna re-record it, that's fine. Um, otherwise, you can just click next to move on to the next question, same thing, three, two, one, there you are. Give your answer, next, all the way through the end. Um, so the questions are very much behavioral based, like Greg was mentioning earlier. Um, so Dr. Garner, uh, along with us, picked these questions for you all. Um, so you can definitely- You're welcome. Yes, you're so welcome. Um, so you can definitely go ahead then and complete that assignment the whole way through. Just keep clicking next until you get to the end. Um, and then once you've done that, you're done. And we will get a link that you've completed your assignment and we'll be able to provide you all feedback with that. So our office will be completing critiques on your mock interviews. So basically what will happen is once you submit it to us, we'll get a notification. Someone from our team will then go in, watch your interview, and we'll fill out an evaluation form and give that form to Dr. Garner um, and she'll be able to distribute them to you all as well. If we can see your email, um, then we can also email it to you directly if you prefer in addition to giving it to Dr. Garner. Um, but that way you all get credit for your assignment that is due. If you have questions about this, um, if you have concerns, probably your best bet is to come to us first um, and we can help with any technical questions that you may have. Um, there is a support on here as well on this website so you can type in your question that you're having and see if their support center can help you. Um, but it's usually pretty straightforward. Students don't have too many problems with it. You can do it on any device that has a camera and a microphone. So you can do it on your phone, tablet, desktop, laptop, whatever works best for you. Uh, what is their process when like reviewing it? Like what criteria or what is, what things are they looking for? Is it the same as like a phone interview or is it uh, more like behavior type questions or I mean like how do they look at the interview to decipher if they want you or not? Mm -hmm. Typically it's going to be how strongly and how confident you've answered the questions as well. Um, and also they're going to look at a lot of your nonverbals too. And so in many cases, the screening interview may ask you just some very basic questions. You won't have a lot of in-depth questions. And so if you have previous knowledge or experience and you're able to articulate that well in those questions, as well as, you know, do you look comfortable interviewing? Do you look comfortable having a conversation? Do you have strong oral communication skills? Do you look like you would be able to take initiative, enthusiastic? Those are gonna be the things that they look for. So I think for a lot of people, they don't feel as if nonverbal cues are as important as answers. However, um, we've gone through plenty of interviews and mm -hmm. we can just tell when somebody just looks unmotivated to be there. And so if you look unmotivated, then that's not going to motivate us to wanna bring you to that next stage. And so that's why we say you wanna make sure that when you're on a phone interview, you're smiling because that conveys over the phone. When you are doing a Skype or an in-person interview, you want to have comfortable eye contact. You don't want to stare somebody down. <laughs> but in the same regard, you don't want to be looking all over the room either as if you're kind of spaced out. And so you want to make sure that you have those nonverbals of leaning in, being engaged. You don't want to have closed off communication. Like, I'm just not trying to hear what you're trying to say. Whenever we do interview evaluations in our office, nonverbals are a listing that we have at the very top because that is going to be important as well. So those are the things that I would suggest you would want to look out for. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Would you um, just briefly mention how you, your office sometimes gets flooded right from the last few days? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we love y'all, but y'all are procrastinators sometimes. Listen, but. don't wait till the last minute. <laughs> Do not wait till the last minute. Poor planning on somebody's part does not constitute an emergency on ours. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, there are a lot of other assignments that we're looking at. Um, a lot of other professors and classes have to do interview streams or resume assignments. So do us a solid, get it done sooner rather than later. If you want it back sooner rather than later. 
And if you do choose to wait, just have patience um, yes. and know that it could take a little bit longer. Because yes. like Greg said, we're doing this not only for your class, but multiple other classes across campus yeah. um, that are even bigger in size. And also, if your classmate says, oh, I already got mine back, and you didn't, don't freak out. Um, we divide these up among the consultants, and so there's a chance that maybe your consultant's out of the office that day, they've got appointments all day, they've got other stuff going on. So you will all get them back, we promise. Um, but definitely, if you do have to wait until later for whatever reason, just be patient and know that it could take extra time to get it back to you. Typically, we do the same policy as our resumes, so five business days is when you can expect to get a critique back from us. If it's not, we're receiving all 30 on the day that it's due, um, so keep that in mind. But we'll do our best. We try and try and work with y'all. So would, would you all like to go um, through a couple of resumes with the class, or because we've got such a small number here today, would, would you like to just do individual help? Yeah, so I think we were thinking individual help. If there's any presenting issues that we see, okay, everyone's having the same question, then maybe we can address it as the class. But we've got Greg, myself, and then Ayana came as well. She's in the back, so she's another career consultant that's here to help. Um, so if you do have your resume and you want us to take a look at it, by all means, we'd love to. Well, we, we will. <laughs> I don't want to say we'd love to, but we will. Um, and we'll be able to give you that feedback that you may need. It's nothing personal. It's nothing personal, y'all. It's just yeah. after you see like a thousand resumes, it just gets a little repetitive sometimes. Yeah, it's so. like this is not news. So you guys, this is Ayana, and she's here too. Yes. So yes. We're, we're thrilled. To, she's here um, in class with us today. So we have a few minutes to um, kind of go ahead and take advantage of this wonderful resources that are here. So if you've got a resume that you'd like for somebody to take a look at today, raise your hand. Great, okay. Um, so for those of you who are not raising your hand, if you all will um, get with your team or a couple team members and go back and see Tanya two or three at a time, um, and then you're free to go. All right? Come on up, Bob. Bring that laptop. <laughs> yeah, y'all don't be shy. Cause my house don't get fed, y'all.